Dad, are you ruining your daughter's marriage? Like, are you a big part of their marriage problems, their issues, their challenges? You're like, hey, what, what you talking about? It's amazing how many couples I work with where the daughter doesn't really get the support from her dad in order to be the wife to her husband and the husband feels undermined by something that happened between the daughter and the dad. This is not a run of the mill subject, but it's so important uh, because I, every time I marry a couple, every time I work with a couple, one of the first questions I ask is how was your relationship with your dad? I asked the wife that. And what I have learned over many years, more than 30 years of working with couples, is that a lot of wives struggle. Hey, I'm Rod Harrison. I'm a relationships expert and an executive marriage coach. Um, I'm excited about delivering something to you that will be helpful, useful to you in your relationship life. If you're a high performer, you're the kind of person I love working with, whether it's in business, whether it's in sports, whether it's in uh, s some field of entertainment. Uh, I love helping people who have uh, very public personalities and high success in public really work on the private side of their world because that's where all the stress happens. I help them reduce relationship stress, increase their productivity, and improve their relationships. Hey, I'm glad you're here today. Let's get into this. Let's talk about this a little bit. This whole idea of dads who are hurting their daughter's marriages. Um, I ask the question oftentimes um, to women who are either married or getting married, like, hey, let's talk about your relationship with your dad. And so often there are so many father wounds that she carries, whether it's he was never there, I don't know who he is, um, he touched me inappropriately, he was abusive to my mom, he abandoned our family. Dad, do you have any idea how important you are to your daughter's health and well-being, her relationship health and well-being? Do you have any idea how important you are there's a very powerful verse in the Bible that says, uh, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. Some places it says, fathers, don't exasperate your children. I'm trying to tell you, dad, you are a powerful, powerful man. You're a powerful man. Hey, I'm a dad of four, four adult children. Uh, three of them are daughters and they're going to be married someday. And I want to be the kind of father who can support their marriages, support their relationship life in a way that makes them both flourish. And what I'm seeing along the way is that there are a lot of dads who don't know how to fit into the space of their daughter's marriages. And so I'm seeing um, dads who undermine the husband's authority, dads who like just shelling out money to the daughter. Hey, don't tell your husband about this. I got you. Hey, if anything goes wrong, I, you can always come back home. And listen, if there's any sort of abuse in that marriage, absolutely, 100%. I'm that guy. Like, I will get with you if you dare to touch my daughters in a way that's abusive. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming for you. I'm going to get with you. I'm going to do it all in the name of Jesus, but I promise you I'm coming for you. But if that's not going on, um, I don't want to be a hindrance to their relationship. Is this making sense to you? Is this, am I, am I on the, am I on the right note here? Uh, let's talk a little bit about this because it's happening uh, in droves, I'm meeting so many or have met and have worked with so many couples where the wives have poor relationships with their dads and it's affecting their ability to relate to their husband. Listen to this, father, father. 
A father is a powerful, powerful figure. The Bible refers to God. God refers to himself as a father. He says in Malachi chapter one, if I'm a father, he goes on to say, then where's the honor that's due to me, right? He said, I'm, I'm a father, but then he says that you and I, who are dads, we are fathers. What's implied in this idea of being fathers is that we are the ones who begin generations. We are progenitors, right? We, we start, we sow the seed that starts families and lives and generations that will follow after us. If I were the devil, I would do everything I could to wreck the seed sower. The man, the husband, the dad, that's why the enemy comes for men to wreck the seed sower, the one who begins things so that the beginning can be rocky and maybe perhaps never recover. If you're a father, you are a seed sower, you are a progenitor, um, you are by definition and default a leader, an influencer over that which you've been entrusted to lead your wife, your children, your home. Fathers, um, if God is a father and you are a father, that means you are godlike. Work with me. We were created in the image of God, Genesis chapter one. In the, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, all that. And then it goes on uh, right around Genesis chapter two, uh, says that in, in the image of God, in the image we were created, <laughs> in the image of God we were created. He created He created us male and female after his image, after his likeness, which means that you carry the image of God. Now, this is important because if you are carrying the image of God, it means that your children see God through you. Now, if you are a healthy um, father, they'll see God in a healthy way. I, I had to get healthy. I'm just telling you, I had to get healthy. I was, I was jacked. I was full of anxiety. I was, you know, that I was moody, like real moody. I'm still kind of moody, but I was really moody. And it was, it was, I was showing this inconsistency to my children. And they're like, how's, how's dad today? I would land hard on them. My wife said to me one time, she says, do you realize how much weight and authority you carry when you walk into the room? Men, do you have any idea that you are, you are godlike to your children so that you have extraordinary influence for good or for evil, for, for well-being or for destruction? You are a God-like figure in their lives. And that's why when you sow well into them, when you encourage them, when you build them up, when you discipline them without abusing them, they can soar. But if you and I don't do that, they can struggle for the rest of their lives. And then some of them get married. Let's talk about our daughters now in particular. And so, um, you, you, here, here are a few things that you want to do. You want to really focus on. Uh, the first thing is um, you want to, <laughs> I want to say this the right way. Uh, you you want to encourage her husband. You want to mentor him. You, you don't want to be his best friend. You don't want to be his drinking buddy. Um, Judges chapter uh, 19, we see this dad drinking with um, her wife's, uh, his daughter's boyfriend. They're just partying up. They're just drinking, right? He, he didn't even marry her. He just was having sex with her. And he invited them into the house and they're drinking and they're partying and, and everything's cool, right? Your job, my job is to serve as a mentor. It is to offer them, I don't have to call myself a mentor, but it's to offer any kind of support, wisdom, guidance that I can, right? You can, you can help your daughter thrive if you can encourage her husband. 
If you can come alongside him, if you can say, hey, man, let me I, I see what you're doing over there. Uh, can I help you with that? Um, hey, uh, I'm reading this book. You might get a lot out of it, too. Right. That's who Jethro was to, to a guy named Moses. Moses was on the on the backside of the desert. He was running from uh, the Pharaoh in Egypt and he he was shepherding sheep for a guy named Jethro. Later on, after Moses goes to tell God's people, uh, God sent me to tell Pharaoh to let y'all go, to let us go. We're going to worship God. Later on, we see that Jethro uh, finds Moses doing his thing, leading the people, but he's leading in a way that's not helpful to them. And Moses is married to Jethro's daughter. He says, hey, uh, let me talk to you. He says, I see how you're doing this, but the, the thing you're doing is not good. It's, you're going to wear yourself out. He came alongside him as a mentor. Let me tell you something. You ever want to be a powerful man to the generations you're called to help? Decide you're going to offer them, uh, offer your, your, your son-in-law or son-in-laws some mentoring. Don't tell them you're mentoring them. Just come along with support. All right, so that's one thing you can do, one thing you can give. I still mentor my son because I want him to be a great husband, right? Um, you can uh, own your fatherhood failures. Let me say that one more time. I'm going to take my time right here. You need to own your fatherhood failures. Man, I made so many mistakes when I was a, when I was young as a dad. I told you, but sometimes I had a temper. Sometimes I was moody. Sometimes I landed hard on my children. I was impatient sometimes. Uh, you got to own your failures. I was working a lot. I worked a lot when they were young. And I had to own that with them. Yeah, I did some things as a dad I am not proud of. I had to go back to my children and repair that. I had to own my failures. Things that I thought were right, things that I thought were good, I had to go back and own them. My daughters and I have great relationships now um, because I, I've had to go back and own it. I had to humble myself. You got to go back and own some things. Were you rough with their mom? Did you did you cheat? Were you addicted? Did you walk out? You got to go back and own that. You can't you can't keep walking around blaming somebody else for it, right? Your role as dad was to set the example. That's that's how we do. And when we fail, we can set the example by simply going back and owning it. Hey, I, I didn't I didn't handle that the right way. I was wrong. I was wrong. I, I shouldn't have done that. I was younger and I made foolish decisions and I was just focused on me or I was thinking short term, whatever it was. Right. If you go to your daughter and own your failures, your stocks rise. Here's the other thing that happens. How she sees her husband improves. You own your failures to her. How she sees her husband will improve. I promise you that if you um, if you failed her in some of the ways that I outlined, uh, she may be having a, a difficult time. She could be having a difficult time respecting her husband. And he feels that he feels like, why is she mad at me? Why you come at me like that? He's feeling this spice and this sauciness that that makes him feel like she doesn't respect him. And oftentimes what I've seen is that when a woman doesn't respect her dad, she has a difficult time respecting her man. And oftentimes they don't put it together. By the way, it happens um, similarly when a man doesn't respect his mom, when he's hurt by his mom, by by how she was either absent or how she wasn't there for him, she didn't nurture him, he can often hold um, hold and harbor resentment and anger toward his mom and he'll take it out on his wife and it comes out in vitriol, it comes out uh, in tense moments of stress and he'll talk to her in ways that are demeaning. I've seen it happen. And here's all I'm telling you, if you don't go back and own your failures, you could be setting her up for failure in her marriage. Am I making sense here? I'm going to share a couple more things with you. Um, but before I do, I want to make sure that you are aware of a really, really helpful resource. It's called my Happy Marriage Workshop. If you are married or if your daughter is married, uh, his marriage is married, you might want to get this workshop to her. 
to them. Um, but maybe you're married and you want to work on your marriage. Maybe this is not your first marriage. It might be your second or third rodeo, right? But get the Happy Marriage Workshop because in it, I outline six key things that every marriage needs in order to succeed. So if you're beefing, if you are, if trust is broken down, if you feel like there's distance and we're not really connecting, um, if your communication is not good, Maybe you don't even know why you married this person. Like, why am I in this relationship? The Happy Marriage Workshop is going to help you get really clear and take some really powerful steps to get your marriage on track. So make sure that you get that. Again, the uh, link is in the description. All right, let me get to these last three things that will help you help your daughter's marriage. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. It's one thing to own it. It's another thing to ask for forgiveness, especially if there was abusive behavior. Yeah. Ask for forgiveness and then step back. You need to ask for forgiveness. She needs time to decide how and when, what forgiveness will look like for her, but just step back. You can't demand it. You can't make it happen. But the fact that you asked her to forgive you could be the thing that changes the whole equation in your relationship with her. Remember I said that if she doesn't respect you, she may have a difficult time respecting her husband. This forgiveness piece is huge. I have watched women um, treat their husbands like, 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 like they're the boys in the house because they didn't respect their dads. If they were abused by a dad, I'm talking about sexually, physically, or otherwise, they will carry that without resolution and they will become distant. You know, well, how did they get married? How did they, how was it that they were attracted to a man when they were abused by a man? Because so often when you don't understand the depths of your own pain, you're still attracted to what's normal and natural. And, 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 and so oftentimes she's attracted to somebody like you. So you got to go and ask for forgiveness. I hope this is making sense to you. Uh, develop your emotional side. That's the fourth thing, right? Um, so often we as men develop our money, we develop our muscle, but we don't, we don't develop our emotions. We may even develop our minds. You might be a reader, you might be a thinker, but we, we often develop those things without developing our emotional side understanding awareness, how people experience us, how to wade in without anxiety, without anger, without all of that stuff. Develop your emotional side. When you do that, they see your daughters will see a much more mature person. And that is attractive. That makes them, that, that inspires them. In fact, my daughter said to me, dad, we can see you're growing. See, you're growing because I started doing some work on my emotional side so that I could still be a, a godlike figure in their lives. Godlike in the sense that they can respect me and they can they can uh, appreciate my leadership, my role in their lives. They allow me to influence their direction uh, in a way that's healthy for them. I respect them. Got great respect for my girls. But I want to be able to help them as they go through life. All right, here's the next one. Uh, pray for their success and for their family. Remember I said fathers are progenitors. We start things. Our role is to pray for them, to pray for their family. Um, you're like, I don't, I don't know nothing about prayer. Maybe you don't. That's cool. Like, you're like, I don't even know where to begin. That's understandable, right? There's no shade. There is no judgment on that. I'm simply saying, uh, prayer is powerful. Prayer shows our dependence upon God. And when you start praying for your children, praying for their marriages, praying for your grandchildren, listen, uh, the devil can't stop you. The devil can't stop them from moving forward because your words are powerful as a father. When you, you as a father are talking to the father, the heavenly father, Stuff starts moving in powerful and extraordinary ways. Hey, use your connection to God. Nurture that connection to God and start talking to God 
about your daughter's marriage, about her family, about the grandchildren who are there or who may be coming. You are a powerful, powerful person. So you can make your help your your daughter's marriage flourish rather than hinder it in any way. Hey, I'm Rod Harrison. I'm glad you were here with me today. And my hope is that you receive something really, really um, insightful and powerful that will help you be who you were designed to be. Dad, you got the power. You make a difference. Hey, go and keep making a difference. Step in. Be the, be the dad that they knew you could be and that you always wanted to be. All right, hey, I'll see you in the next video.